Hello there. In this video, we are going to look at five Excel functions for finance, which can be used wherever time value of money principle can be applied. The reason we look at these five functions together as a set is because they take each other as arguments in the functions, right? Okay. To understand these functions better, I've created a timeline on the right over here. To begin with, PV stands for present value, which refers to the money paid or received today. So if we use mortgage as an example, PV could refer to the total amount of money being borrowed right now. Okay. PMT stands for a constant payment for every period of time. The period can be every month, every year or so on. We can predefine that. Okay. So if we again use mortgage as an example here, payment can be the monthly payment which is paid to repay our loan. Right. Okay. Next, FV stands for future value. This is the amount of money paid or received at the end of the designated time period. Okay, so if we use an investment as an example, FV could be could refer to the amount of money which we expect at the end of the investment period. Okay, rate is the interest rate over the time period under consideration. Right. Okay, and. NPER stands for number of periods. That's the number of periods within the time period under consideration. Okay. Again, if uh, if we are looking at a monthly payment scheme, then NPER refers to the number of months. Okay. We're going to look at three main examples to understand the usage of these five functions better. Okay. We're going to start with mortgages as our first example. Okay. Consider that. You want to borrow $500,000 from the bank and your goal is to calculate what is your monthly payment to repay the loan if you're considering a time frame of let's say 20 years. Okay. Assume that the bank charges 3% on an annual basis Okay, and our goal is to calculate the monthly payment. For that I'm going to use the PMT function which stands for payment. If you look at the syntax for the function, you can see that the arguments in this function basically are the other functions we are considering in this set, right? This applies to each of the other functions too, okay? So the first argument is rate. The 3% provided here is an annual rate. But considering that we are paying a monthly mortgage, we need to divide that by 12 to get a monthly interest rate, okay? The next argument is number of periods. Again, 20 is the number of years. So I'm going to multiply that by 12 to get the number of months. PV, as we learned from the timeline earlier, is the amount of money which is going to be borrowed or paid today. Okay, Because we receive 500,000, PV is positive 500,000. You look at the last two arguments, which are optional. FV refers to a lump sum cash you can pay or receive at the end of the time period. In this case, it's not applicable. I'm going to skip that. I just want to show you what type stands for. Type can take two values, either zero or one. Zero means the payment, the PMT, is being paid or received at the end of each time period. So, okay, at the end of each month, for example, or if type takes the value of one, it means it refers to the payment being made or received at the beginning of each time period. By default, it's considered as zero at the end of the time period. Here in the case of a mortgage, you're paying at the end of each month and hence type can be left as zero by default or you can include a zero over here, okay? We find that we need to pay $2,773 per month if we have to repay this $500 loan over 20 years. Okay, this is a monthly payment. Keep that in mind. Okay, let's look at a similar mortgage example, but from a different perspective. Let's say you can afford only a maximum of $1,000 every month, again, with a 20 year, with a 20 year horizon. Okay. Now, what we are trying to calculate is what's the maximum amount you can borrow from the bank. Okay, so we're basically going to find the present value in this case. Okay, so for that, we're going to use the PV function. 
Again, if you look at the syntax here, you see that the other functions are basically arguments for this function. Okay, so we start with rate. As the example before, we need to divide that by 12 to get the monthly rate. The number of periods have to be multiplied by 12 to get the number of months. The PMT, the reason it's negative is because you're paying that to the bank. It's cash, it's a cash outflow. Okay, when it's a cash inflow, you use a positive value. Okay. And future value and type can be left as blank because they are optional arguments. Okay. So what this shows is that if you can afford only a thousand dollars every month, okay, you can only borrow one eighty thousand US dollars, okay, if you are planning to repay that over a twenty year period. Okay. If you want to learn more about the mortgage calculator, I've created a separate video which shows a very detailed example which includes an amortization table. I can link that up in the description below and if you are interested, you can check that out. Okay. Moving on in our journey of these five functions, the next example looks at savings and investments. Okay. So looking at the first one, imagine you have, uh, you have, a, you have a kid and you have 18 years before your kid goes to college and you want to save up to let's say a hundred thousand dollars in this 18 year time span okay if you can potentially invest your money at 10 percent every year how much should you save up every month to reach that figure of 100 thousand per year okay so to find the payment every month we use the pmt function as earlier and the rate again has to be divided by 12 to get the monthly rate. The number of periods is again 18 multiplied by 12 to get the number of months. PV, there's no PV here because you're not paying or receiving any lump sum amount today. FV is what you want to have at the end of these 18 years. Okay, so that's 100,000. Type here because you're making the payment starting today. Okay. If you're looking at an 18 year time span, your first payment you wanna ideally make today. So that's why we're gonna use one here as the time. Okay. Which shows that you need to be saving $165 approximately to reach this 100,000 figure at the end of 18 years. Okay. What if now you want to save for your retirement and you can afford to save $2,000 every month? Okay, in the same investment scheme, which can give you potentially 10% every year. Okay, you have 30 years, let's say, to go for your retirement. Okay, how much could you potentially make at the end of 30 years? It's what we are going to calculate using the future value function. Okay, say so FV, the rate again has to be divided by 12 to get a monthly rate. The number of periods again multiplied by 12. PMT, remember it has to be in negative because it's a cash outflow. Okay, there's no PV because there's no lump cash being paid or received at this point of time. Type again has to be one because you're planning to start your investment right now. Okay, so if you save two thousand dollars a month at ten percent every year, at the end of thirty years your investment would be worth 4,558,000 approximately, okay? Now we look at the same example from a different perspective, okay? What if your goal is to have 400,000 and you could potentially invest $2,000 every month, okay? How long should you keep up this investment to make 400,000? Let's say you're planning to buy a fancy car or you're planning to buy a house how long should you keep investing $2,000? For that, we are going to use the number of periods function, which is NPER. The rate, again, has to be divided by 12. The payment is the monthly payment here, which has to be negative because it's a cash outflow. There's no lump sum payment today, so the present value has to be skipped. Future value is 400,000 because that's what you want at the end of the designated time period. And type is one because you're investing from today. Okay. The number of time periods here 
is the number of months, right? So to get the number of years, I'm going to take that and divide that by 12. Okay, so approximately you have to invest $2,000 every month for 10 years to have 400,000. Okay, to understand uh, savings and investments in detail, I've created a separate video again, which talks about just one very detailed example with an amortization table where you can understand the power of compounding in depth with the chart and so on. Okay, moving on, the final example we're going to see in this video concerns bonds. Okay, bonds typically pay a semi annual coupon or a semi annual fixed amount. Okay, so we're going to look at bonds to use and see where we can benefit from using those five functions which we learned earlier. Okay, we still haven't learned how to use the rate function, which is where we're going to start right now. Okay, so what is the rate of return you obtain by buying this bond today? That's what we are going to calculate. Okay, or in financial terms for bonds, it's also known as the yield to maturity. Okay, let's say the bond has a face value of $100 and offers a coupon of 10%. Okay, if it's a semi annual bond, it's going to offer you a coupon of $5 every six months. Okay, the bond is trading at $80 today. So, to buy the bond today, you're going to have to pay $80, and the bond has six years to maturity. Okay, so how do we calculate the yield to maturity? Use the rate function. The number of periods is six years. But because the bond is semi-annual and it offers coupons every six months, we need to multiply that by two to get to reflect the 12 semi-annual payments. Okay. How much is the payment? It's not $10, but it's only $5 every six months. The present value is the price you pay. The future value is what you get at the end of the time period of six years, just $100 here. And type, you get the coupon payment at the end of every six months. So that's fine. By default, it's zero. So you can skip that. Okay. So the interest rate you get 7.6%. Be careful that this is the semi-annual interest rate. It's not the annual interest rate. So to get the annual one, you're gonna multiply that by two. Okay. So the bond, if you invest in this bond, it gives you a return of 15.2 percent okay we're going to look at this from another perspective to calculate what could be the fair price to buy a particular bond okay so in this case we are given the return offered by the bond so we need to find the price which can be fair for this bond. okay so we start with the so we start with the pv function the rate is an annual rate so we're going to divide that by two to get the semi annual rate. The number of periods have to be multiplied by two to reflect every six months. The payment has to be divided by two again to show the $5. And the future value is what you get at the end of six years. Okay. So this bond, the fair price for this bond would be $114.50. Okay. If you're interested in learning more about bonds, I've created a separate video where I discuss yield to maturity in detail and I also talk about bonds trading at par, at discount and at premium. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. Cheers.